Welcome to the Dadvocacy Podcast. I'm Ryan. I am Tristan. Episode seven of season two. Seven. Since we, since we stopped counting at like 35 or whatever. We, it's hard. <laughs> no, we had like 38 last season. Dude, I forgot. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We, I get screwed up and I'm like, I don't even know what we're on. So I have to check every time. I've done a lot of these. Now I'm going back and like seeing memories on Facebook. <laughs> like a year ago today, you did that. I'm like, oh yeah. So a year ago today, we released episode three. Oh. That makes sense. That's yeah. Right on time. Yeah, it totally yeah. is. So I'm like, we started around Christmas. Yeah, cool. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So and that was, you know what episode that was? Um, I made you cry. Tristan is a puddle. Yes, I made you cry. I'll never outlive that. It's just, uh, <laughs> I'll never live it down, I guess. Is that what it is? No, that's good. I think it showed you were human. No, nope. I'm a machine. <laughs> I am absolutely not human. <laughs> Have no emotions. It's not good for me. <laughs> it's not good for me. Dude, that's a nice hat. I like that hat. Thanks. Patriot. Patriot and company. New name. New name. You know why? New look. Well, kind of sort new of, kind of sort of, yeah, a little bit. But the reason why they're Patriot and Company now is drum roll. They released women's soaps. Women's scented soaps. Yep. Pretty awesome. And uh there's another store they added locally too. Dude, do that. Downtown um, Coeur that you can hit their get their all of really? their stuff up. Yep. Why so, do we do you know the name? I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, I'm going to get on the, the old Instagram and check so, out. So, uh, yeah. Patriot has what? All the Nutrishop stores in Boise, right? Mm -hmm. Nutrishop. I sound really raspy, I guess. Um, working on Nutrishop here in the Coeur d'Alene area. Yep. Which is Rockstar. Love that. And then something downtown off Sherman. Yeah. So, um, dang. We don't know. Released the women's kit. See, look, Patriot Women's Company. Oh, dude, that's cool looking. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I like the pink star. Uh, Best Life CDA. What is, what is Best Life doing? It's have? a new store that opened up that offers nothing but locally sourced kind of community-based products. Oh, very So hippie. it's all local made stuff or North Idaho made. Actually, I, Are we gonna start I've been in this store. Have you? It is super cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let me see. So like they offer all sorts of like random stuff and they're like local artists that's um okay that's kind of cool yeah i mean like the, the walk through this is really bad video we're on video but i'm showing him a video like you walk in and they've got like do we want video of the video local artwork and stuff hit yeah. them up at best life cda on instagram that's cool way cool um they've got like and they sell black rifle coffee Ooh, i mean you which can't go wrong i there. mean well yeah and evan's from <clears throat> lewiston so mm -hmm. i mean yeah that's pretty killer which lewiston's getting a black rifle black rifle coffee shop they're i mean I, they're delicious they are good they, dude they do a good job especially some of their specialty brews and they're roast i think my favorite thing about them is is beyond the coffee it's all the videos i think i sent you one this week you probably did i i mean they, the some, stuff they, they put I out of, all the time yeah, the stuff they put out is pretty ridiculous all the time it's freaking um, it's phenomenal because we just um <laughs> i mean you gotta have fun with life right yeah so patriot and company now, not just Patriot men's company. The, it's a men's and women's company now. Um, but yeah, at Best Life in Coeur downtown Proving. on Sherman Avenue. Um, uh, still get their products at Anchor Coffee too. And Nutri Shop. And Nutri Shop. So yep. hit them up. And I know that they're working on some other locations around the region. So that'd be pretty sweet to expand excited, out there. Yeah, yeah totally cool excited for, for that. So hit them up. Great products. Hey, so um, Halo, the video game. The good old days of red versus, red versus blue. Right? I think everybody <laughs> played it when we were kids. Everybody, yeah. right? No doubt about it. Paramount is coming up with a Halo TV show. And, you know, I first heard about it and I was like, oh, come on. They always screw stuff up. Can't be true. It's not going to look good. They're trying to get like the older gen, or not Gen Z. Oh, they want to reach us? Like, yeah, they're trying to get like the millennial crowd. We are, or I'm, I'm, I'm not, not I don't a claim millennial. I'm not a millennial either. I am not a millennial. But like, because Halo was a bridge. Between two generations. I really feel it was. Okay. Because like, like when Xbox first came out, like the original Xbox. All right. You had like what? Um, I mean, Halo was the game. It was the game. It was, I mean, like. Call of Duty. Kind of like the very first really, one. Really? Or was that 360 when that came out? I think it was 360. So I mean, they got Halo and a bunch of sports games, essentially. Like I remember playing like Halo with my buddies in college and like yeah. going 
crazy for hours. Yeah, everybody loved Halo. Every, yeah. I mean, everybody. Nobody. But even it was like the older crowd than even us, like that had like the Xbox played that too. Mm-hmm. And so I think it did bridge, like, because that was the first like online game you could play too, wasn't it? Or one of the first ones? I don't know. Because I remember like you learned to talk smack. You'd have like some like eight year old so kid I, with a British accent just cussing you up one side and down the other. I never did the online thing until like <laughs> two or three years ago. Okay. Because my kids were on when I was working, right? And I'm like, mm, we're going to hold off. I know what life is like there, you know? <laughs> it's like, it was a big no. So, yeah, the, uh, the online forums when you played those games, like way back when, they're all schmucks. Dude, they're all schmucks. It's like the Walmart of people. <laughs> I don't know. It's like and it, it is. It's like it's like a little seven year old that's berating the hell out of you, and you're just like dropping f bombs and talking about your mom. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's um, it's awful. That's a good little adventure, though. You know, <laughs> it's like dude, you're the worst things in society, and you're like you little bastard. I just want to. <laughs> it's like let's handle this because you can't even get mad at him because he's a little kid. So it's like listen here, you little punk. Like you're, you're like, like oh, wait, you I'm yelling at I'm yelling at a seven year old or whatever. It's whole, it's crazy, dude. It's totally. Like, <laughs> Where's your mom? <laughs> Time to get it over with. Yeah. You should not ban him on Xbox. You're like, oh, mother, I get you. But yeah, I mean, so I watched the trailer okay. and dude, it looks epic. It totally looks epic. I, I don't know any grown man who does not want that costume. I would wear it on Halloween. Like Master Chief, day. like I, every single year. Yeah. I would never not, not wear that. Have a freaking Zoom meeting with your boss with a helmet on. I would do that. I don't care. <laughs> Drive a warthog. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be actually pretty sick. <laughs> what is it, like the the glow saber thing? When you played like group mode and like you would, oh, I forgot. You I had forgot, to battle yeah. for the sword because it was like an instant kill whenever you stabbed mm-hmm. somebody with it. I forgot. I always remember the needler. Uh huh. Like little pink little. Yeah. Yeah. I think like cool. you were hitting them with like the coronavirus. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just nail just. <laughs> Spam that freaking button, and you're like, Oh, there's a million, like, and it tracks them. You're like, Yeah, I'm gonna get you, <clears throat> dealer. Hey, so, yeah, um, sorry, no, that's all right, no big deal. That's what it is, you know. We're... Megan Fox, she used to be so hot. I know you still think she's okay. So, we, we got to take, I don't, I don't understand these women that are absolutely beautiful trying to look just like each other or dating dudes that maybe they're really nice guys and we just don't know. And I, I'm not going to try and claim any judgment here at all. Cause who knows, but I got to say Megan Fox, I was a better choice. And then I'm going to say, um, what's her face from, um, the vampire movies, underworld, Kate Beckinsale. Again, I was a better choice. And <laughs> that's the reality because your dude looks just like machine gun Kelly. And that scares me a lot. Uh, MGK Where's, is such a weird looking guy. Sorry. I just don't. Okay. So he could be a cool dude. I don't know. But like, yeah. as a, as a, I look at him as a human being and I'm like, it's not somebody that I would want to come over and watch my kid. And hey, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> I just, I don't understand. So anyway, that's why like, I wonder with Megan Fox, I'm like, what are you thinking? Cause that you have kids like Brian Austin green's cool but, with MGK it, hanging again, out with your kids. Like we, we can't judge. Cause we don't know him. Maybe he's a good guy. Maybe it's just, his whole just persona. MGK with like little kids hanging out on him. Well, I mean, they don't have to yet. Well, I mean, they're engaged, so maybe. I don't know. But Megan Fox, you're, you're so beautiful. Like, probably one of the most beautiful women on the planet. And that's that's probably true, right? Um, I, mean, I guess there's a lot of women that are beautiful that aren't even in television. So, a lot of indie women are hot. Oh, my gosh. Like, Hindi, you know, from, like, India. I watch a little Bollywood. And, oh, Lord, there. There is some deliciousness over there. Dude, what? Oh, my bad. So creepy. Like, I mean, <laughs> Let me bring it back in. I'm sorry. Dude, he's like taking that on the tangent. I'm like, I'm not following you there. Ooh. Sorry. I'm not going to go Ashwari with you. Ashwari right? Ray. Oh I'm my. Not, she not... won like Miss Universe or whatever. Okay. Like legit pull her up. You'll be like, okay, you're right. There are some. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because oh. it made, made news, but yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, okay. Megan Fox. Um, it's funny because a lot of people are always like, oh, you know, people are perfect. Right. And we idolize our people idolize these women. She has clubbed thumbs. Now look at my thumb and that's like a round kind of a normal thumb, right? And compare it to Ryan. His is flatter, but hers is flat. But I also so it, cut the tip of this one off at one point. Oh, well, that makes in sense. Life, but yeah. But hers is flat. So it looks a lot like 
this microphone here. <laughs> um, it looks like a big toe. <laughs> kind of looks like a big toe, but no, no hair in the knuckle, right? It's, it'd be like imagining like a... It's like a long big toe. Like a shovel. Yeah. But if... No, that's too pointy. Of, like I have a Like very, it's the flat scoop? Sort of, yeah. But like the profile of it, not the actual like flat big face of it but yeah you know, yeah yeah whatever. okay yeah no totally i got you yeah just like yeah but interesting i i'd never i had it's no like, idea what's so, the movie shallow hell where the really really like super cute chick gwyneth paltrow's in it didn't she have like a tail or something oh, i don't remember shallow hell I, 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 shallow hell was somebody like did a very, somebody very had large a woman in it yeah or she was like in real life really fat i don't know yeah and in he real life she was really fat all he it. saw was yeah. gwyneth paltrow and yeah hotness, right back when she was hot yeah. Um, I don't know if if a uh, if a tail would be a game changer. You could just grab onto that thing. Super weird. Stay right there. Super. You know, weird. like super weird. She like wags it when she's happy to see you. If she had cat ears. It might be okay. <laughs> but like up here, you know, not like on the side up here. Yeah, I don't know. If you're into cartoons, that'd be um, super. You're still. all agreeing with me, like, yeah, cat girls are cool. <laughs> Ryan's not into that. It's all right. So it's it's just it's neat though that like. You know, we we only see perfect, but we miss that point where, hey, maybe you got jacked up thumbs, or maybe <laughs> all of your feet are your toes are all webbed together, right? She has normal feet. Like by Megan the way. Fox, so I'd have a hard time like looking at her and be like, oh, you get your thumb is screwed up. I'd be looking. Like, at, when would like, you look at like? I mean, I don't know, man. That's pretty a face, thing. and like, like, yeah, but I mean, everything else is person, great. Maybe your personality sucks. I don't know. But like, everything else is great. I mean, I heard she's a great mom, which is awesome. Cool. Um, and, and, you know, she has normal feet, which is great. Not like I'm into that or anything. She doesn't have like web feet. Are you into feet? Are you a no. foot guy? Not no. at all? Really? No. Okay. Because I, I don't care. Like, I don't really, he kind of gross me out. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, oops, my bad. Um, no, I'm so feet don't bother me at all. I'm massaging whatever, you know, I'm not going to get up and I'm, I'm not like that guy gross, but like, if you look like you can catch small animals with your feet, I'm going to get it fixed. You're not a, there's a, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> There was a um, like trim your toenails, <laughs> kill that athlete's That's foot. Of politician that if you've got all that hair coming yeah. up, like you look like Bilbo Baggins. No, we gotta yeah, like we gotta fix your feet. Buckwheat hanging out in the middle of your big toe. Yeah, not okay. We're fixing that. <laughs> but Max your big toe. I, that would hurt. I'm too. still I'm still consi- <laughs> like the whole MGK thing though. I know he must be a really good guy. I don't really know. Nice, or maybe she just is like, you know what? I've had so much serious. I want to relax, and he's fun. Because fun wins sometimes, but you he know. Doesn't seem like he's fun. I don't. I mean, he, he acts seems like he's angry all he acts the time. Like he's twenty, like, so maybe he is just like a I giant goofy kid. He's. I think he's like twenty six. There's like uh, a five year difference. I did see I him do a pizza review with Dave Portnoy on Barstool. Okay, how was that? All he right. was like super quiet and kind of acted like a jack. Like he was like kind of a jerk, standoffish. Like was it was because he was nervous. It was like it was beneath him. Oh, I oh. I'm really confused. Megan Fox hit me up. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale, it's uh, you too. It's okay. I'm here for you. Not, not Demi Lovato anymore. I was never really a Demi fan. Okay. Didn't, neither. She kind of looked like Megan Demis. Fox back in the day. No, dude. Megan Fox had beautiful blue eyes. Okay. Had the, yeah. I'm a, she had working on the engine. I'm in playing. Transformers. <laughs> I'm playing. It was before that, though. <laughs> See, I, was was like, great, I was an Alicia Cuthbert fan. She was, oh, Alicia was, oh, my girl next door. Mm-hmm. That scene in the doorway. Yeah, I'd let her in. I mean, it's just true. Like, and this is me. Like, when she was Wait, popular, though, I was like that? twenty. What's the 19, girl from 20? New Guy? New Guy. You know the girl from New Guy. I feel like she's a like another Alicia person. What is? Where's my? Grab your phone, man. IMDb. Let me, let me get my phone. Yeah. IMDb. This. We gotta find out real fast because. Why are we talking about girls? Anyway, I'll take talking about Megan while you're looking that up for us. So <clears throat> from what I know, Megan's a really good mom. I read about her. I was checking it out. You know, it was really cool. I don't know anything about Brian Austin Green besides 90210. Did he okay. do anything else in life? Sure, he may have directed or something, perhaps. I don't know. From from our standpoint, though, we care about just good parenting. Oh, you're thinking so, of Elijah Dush- Dushku. Uh, Elijah Dushku, yeah. Yeah. Zoe Deschanel was in there, too. I totally forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, she was uh, one of the best. He was nerdy yeah. friend. All we, for Ryan and I, we really hope that they're just great parents, right? And that they co-parent well, because that's a win for the kids. Here's really cool, though. You don't hear it very often. It's not in the tabloids. They actually have joint legal and physical custody of their children. That's, they're like, for three, Hollywood, that's pretty rare. It's like three or four boys. 
That's pretty cool. That's honestly um, super. Well, I heard that about, um, oh, crud. My man crush. Um, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds? No. Everybody. I mean, uh, he's mine. I'm gonna put Andy that from Parks and Rec. Uh, why can't I remember his name? Freaking uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. Uh, Dude, we why do we do time. this all the time? Every like, single time we forget. I know, because we're like old guys or something now. Like it's it's at all. We couldn't think of in. One Direction last week. That's what it was too. I know. <laughs> Four hours later, I was like, oh yeah, it was One Direction. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we, I had to be reminded. We are those people. Um <laughs> Abby was like, it was One Direction. I'm like, dang it. I, I was in the car and I'm like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Dude, every time you sit up, it makes me want to sit up because we're the same height. We are the same height. Yeah, that but it's neat. But not right now. I'm like, wait, a, let me let me fix my. I need to posture up too. Do you know what that's from okay. though, right? No. Jack, it's Jack Black. And they, oh, is it Jack Black? Uh, what's the movie? Orange County. It's like we are the same oh, height. Dude, I that forever. That See, that one, look, we look, we look normal. But the hat's giving you a little edge. Yeah, it's, that's all right. On it. Um, no, man, but so, dude, like, so like, yes. Sorry. Talking about famous checks. Famous? No. Oh, check. okay. Dude, uh, famous people with like parenting stuff, right? Kanye has oh, been Kanye. releasing some videos lately. Um, so Kim is alienating him. Like from here's, his, here's where I'm going to start, right? Kanye. Kanye is also drama. But yeah. He intrigues me a lot because he, he really, I, I honestly think he probably has like a personality disorder of some sort, mm -hmm. but whatever dude, is he musically a genius? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's brilliant. I loved his, uh, your book album. Was it your book? Graduation. My bad. Graduation. Yeah, graduation. KG five, two, a year book. Yeah. Graduation album was bomb. Loved it, right? Kanye's gospel album. I actually kind of liked it. There was like was two songs decent. that were hot. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, this is not, a, yeah, Kanye yeah. got it, right? And there were some, and I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm sitting in a church choir. Yeah. Because I was like, this is very, very gospel-y. Very, and I'm like, nope, it doesn't work. But the couple songs were bangers. Just bomb. It was. I thought it was, yeah, I mean... And then he started getting a little weird and looking like other things and politically his stance politically. I mean, you know, I'm not, whatever it's whatever he wants to be. Well, right. he got roasted for supporting Trump. Yeah. And, but I mean, you and know, then like tries running for president, which was weird. <laughs> I, and then he started doing other weird stuff. And I don't I know, know if he was like personality was going downhill at that point or what was happening. But like, do you think we'd be better off with Kanye as president than our current president? Absolutely. I agree. Weirdly. The interesting part is that I feel like we would have like some part of the conversation might be about the same. Yeah. <laughs> like just going off on tangents randomly. Yeah. Like. But I, I feel, okay. Okay. If Kanye was president right now, we'd know about aliens. He couldn't do any worse. It'd be 100%. He'd be like, look, here's all the stuff on our aliens that we have. It's like, it's real. When uh, Dave Chappelle did the skit about, um, Day after tomorrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was like playing the black president and he's like, here's a cure for AIDS. <laughs> like He's like, we've had aliens since 1948. I'm like this the, is Bibble. Dude, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is literally what, what Kanye would do. That's spot on the money. <laughs> Just like start leaking all these top secret things. Yeah. Like, Hey, you guys want to, you want to have an episode of cribs in area 51? <laughs> I can see it. It'd be, it's, that'd be Kanye. Would well, it be bad? Welcome, welcome to area 51. It'd be freaking cool. <laughs> It'd be super, freaking cool, it'd be right? Super cool. Okay, so we would be legalized. It, it would be a presidential order across nation, no matter what. Done. Kanye would say yes. Probably. Uh, the wall would be built, hundred percent. Yep. And I'd prefer a wall and not a cage. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the wall would be built, hundred percent. Get rid um, of the cages. Yep. Done. I don't know how he feels about the Second Amendment. I don't think he'd touch it. Mm, yeah, I think he'd leave it alone. Personally, I think he would touch. He'd be like, he'd, he'd be like, whatever. Um. There would be, there would absolutely be a White House rap. The national anthem would be rewritten by Kanye. Or he'd be like, here's part two, yeah. you know? <laughs> That'd be wicked sick. I really honestly don't know if it would be any worse. Like I literally, like I'm looking at this and I'm like, and I'm not saying like, like we're not, we're not like running down the we're street, like we're saying. having to keep our houses warm with like a burning barrel in our yeah. living room. By any it's means. not but Texas. It's not that, but like I look at it, and it's like you know who would he hire in certain in certain places? I think he would have just like stolen Trump's Trump's cabinet. To be honest with you, I think he probably would have found a few others. He gets some his his homies and be like, yeah. "Hey, bro." But and here's the thing, though, right? The issue is that when you make when you're when you don't live how normal people live, you don't understand the plight. So mm -hmm. these people are like supposed to be economic specialists, and you're like, 
I get it, but you don't, they're not doing the right thing anyway. Some of these people aren't, aren't giving you have his like manager running the department of commerce. <laughs> Potentially. I mean, you gotta think they made how much money? Yeah. Would it be a bad thing? I don't know. I, I mean, know. That, that's why you're like a business guy in office because you want treat it like a business. You're not a role model. You're a CEO. I'm, I'm of sorry. Company. Essentially president is CEO. Like if you treat it like you're the rule maker, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong business. Like yeah. you are the CEO of the country. Like you got to treat it like a business. The, it's all it the, is. the country will run better. Because and people that, stop. But, yeah. Don't let your kids be influenced by a president. That's pointless. <laughs> but I mean, Dude. he's like, I, I think about it and I go, okay, so he's a president. It does you nothing know, for when me. It, when it I starts like having an effect on taxes and stuff like that and insurance, I'm like, yeah, okay. Like now it's really affecting me. Like when we have inflation now, it costs more to fill up my car and buy groceries. Now I'm seeing a literal effect of some of this. Well, stuff. you're like, but truckers, there, there's so many ports that the truckers can go to to get the stuff we need, right? Yeah. Truckers and, and trains. Well, if you say in California, right, they want electric everything or at least vehicles newer than whatever date, yeah. you limit all the truckers that are actually using or and bringing, limiting the, the trains that are actually electric, but they have a diesel generator. It nobody, which is the most efficient way to, to power runs out of power in California and they pull up a regular car <laughs> Dude, with just, a freaking diesel right. generator on the back of so, it. Where does the electricity come from? California, it's not all water power. Dude, it's diesel. There was a principality in California, a municipality in California. Yep. that literally asked Tesla drivers and electric car owners to not charge their cars for certain hours during the day. Dude, there's a three hour split. <laughs> Like people, I mean, <laughs> Teslas are cool, right? They're I want, fast, I want like, the P1000 with the freaking ludicrous mode or whatever, right? I would take a, a the cyber truck. They look super dumb. It's weird and neat all at the same time. I know it looks super dumb, but dude, like, do you know the ridiculous off-road capabilities you could do with that truck? As long as you kept it charged. Yeah. 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 It's could be nuts off-road. <laughs> it's, it's literally, yeah. it looks like, you know, when you're it looks like, like the car you drew when you were six. With your ruler. Yeah. And it was all rulered and you had like the uh what's the box paper stuff, graph paper. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh I'm gonna no, oh, that's a truck. You know? <laughs> that's what happened. That's where he came from. You made the wheels with the protractor with mm -hmm. the compass. Yep. Stick in the middle and spit it. Because it was a cool seat. Like I gotta learn new things, right? It's I think that's what happened. But like you know that probably Elon Musk did that on purpose too. I bet you he drew actually was like, <laughs> like look what I scribbled. I bear you, they will buy anything. They will buy this. And they're like, no way. It's like, make it. He's like, we already have a hundred thousand orders. We're good. Do it. We're not gonna lose anything. It'll finance my spaceship. So, but okay. So this is what I think. I think if Kanye is in office, he rewrites the star spangled letter makes part two, but it's, it's more like the movie lean on me okay. where the principal's like, sing the song, right? And it's the new version the choir teacher wrote. Yeah. And he's like, let me see this, right? And it's the first praise they ever get. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be sweet, dude. Fugtastic version of freaking you know the what, Star though? Spangled Banner. I think Kanye like was so like enlightened at the time too. He may have gotten rid of the separation of church and state. Mm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There's just some stuff he would touch that would like freak people out. I just think there would be, <laughs> I think there would be so much. Besides here. Kanye being president. <laughs> He'd be like, look, the CIA did bring cocaine into inner city hoods to screw with people. Yes, there was a plan developed to stop um, African-American families from yes. having fathers and Hoffa's mothers together. body yeah. is buried underneath the Meadowlands Stadium in He'd New Jersey. Like, Saddam Hussein <laughs> is down in Mexico having fun and chilling. We didn't kill him. We just moved him over. Osama bin Laden? Yes, was was Barack Obama. Like, <laughs> I totally, Kanye would be a trip and a half. <laughs> kind of makes me uh, wish I voted for him. I know. I'm like, like, man. Like, how much fun would that have been? Like, let's see, let's see where this goes. Hold on a second. Like, let's watch. Okay, so. Right, so, but with Kanye and parenting, though, right? He's having some issues sorry, yes. with Kim. Not no, letting him know about the whereabouts of their kids. and Oh, that's why he, like, he totally dropped to, in on that birthday party, didn't yeah, he? He wasn't able to go to the And he found out through one of the people in her posse let his like publicist know where the party was. And so he showed up to his own kid's birthday party. How is it? Kanye's got a lot of money. Yeah. Kim K. Um, she's I, got maybe a lot of, has a, I don't know what she has, but like how, I mean, she's got old family money like that. Like her dad made piles, but he 
You mean her mom and her mom? No, her real dad. She has a who's her dad? I thought Bruce Jenner wasn't her actual dad. No, I thought he was her stepdad. Yeah, something like that. But that's where they got the money from. They didn't have money before that at all. I thought her dad was like loaded. No, I think it's gonna totally. I don't know. Uh, People, please let us know. Kardashian? Whoa, he was an attorney. He was an L. He was on OJ's attorney group. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, but did he make a ton of money from it or not? Yeah, he would made a ton of money as an attorney for the stars. Because I heard there was a whole the Jenner thing, and then they got their TV show because Jenner was famous, right? No, they got their <clears> money because they were stupid rich, and then Jenner was involved. Hmm. Yeah. I'm intrigued. So Kardashian was one of OJ Simpson's attorneys. I didn't know that. Yeah. I watched that OJ thing on. We're FX just beating our mics up today. Know, we don't know what to do with our hands. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're here doing our thing. So we totally went off on a tangent for like 15 minutes. So it's cool. But yeah. yeah so but with the whole Kanye and like the, like the, the alienation thing, like it needs to be addressed though. Like it's just the regular dads aren't immune to this. However, I'm going to pose a question though. Have you ever held separate parties like do, like mom does one and you did one? Totally. So have I. I do it for all of his birthday parties. Yeah. I don't do a joint one. No, at all. And then I'm like, I, I don't see where an issue is. Because I have two totally different circles of people that were around. Mm-hmm. And so, I would feel uncomfortable with some of the people. So here's, here's the thing. Does that make what Kim did bad or uh-huh. good? It makes it indifferent to me because, yeah. oh, hey, she's having her own party. Connie, have your own party later, dude. No big deal. One up or who yeah. cares? You know, invite like right. You don't need to ice show cube, up. whatever. Like have all your buddies Unless show up. Like, you're trying to get the publicity. Yeah. Uh, publicity. I faded out there, right? To make it happen. You know, and that's where I kind of wonder was like, is he kind of look like a pariah or something? Like he's trying to like make more out of this than what it actually is. I don't know. I mean, he is trying to speak out for dads though. That like he's like, this is a problem that we're facing, and he's using his clout for that. So I applaud that. Yeah, because cool. there is it is an issue. I'm, that's totally cool. Yeah. Um, so if he's going to use, if anything good can come out of something that like seems confusing and I don't know the other side, I'll accept the good. But like, if it's going to start being divisive and it's like, no, you know, we're not going to fight for deadbeats too. Like <laughs> it gets gray. Let's put it yeah. that way. It, it's there's, there's always a hard line and that's the tough spot. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. We'll get back to uh, our usual conversation. <laughs> back People, to regular schedule programming. Please teach your freaking kids to check the toilet when they flush so they know when it goes down or if it doesn't go down or if they need to grab the plunger and go to town. So my kids, and I'm, I'm, I'm calling myself out right now, you know, I taught them to use it, but they just, it's like they put the toilet down and then they flush and walk away. And then I show up two hours later baby, and, baby and I'm like, arm is like, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm like, dude, what in the hell? I didn't do this. And then I go, did you do this? And they go, no, they're the ones that, that. Okay. So your kids are the ones that are at school that like totally blow up a toilet and just walk away. Cause that always grossed me out, man. Oh, it's that was cool, so though. nasty. Oh, is this like, what, who is this doing? Who's doing this? Like, can we tell you a story? I don't know. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you another story too. So go ahead. It's a coaching story. Once upon a time <laughs> in John Doe's life, <laughs> this is not a story about me. Maybe he went to work and had to use the bathroom really bad. He had four cups of coffee that day. Coffee makes you poop. Coffee Diuretic. does make you go. Diuretic. And he hadn't been eating his normal food. So he went to the bathroom and instead of it aiming straight into the tube, it hit the tube and fell back against the back wall. Were you so, slightly dehydrated at this point too? So he got up <laughs> to let the, the thing flush because they're automatic. And nothing happened besides the water going down. Uh-oh. Um, and he thought, I can walk away from this. It's okay. But there were only three other people in the building. So one of you was going to get singled out at some point during the day. <laughs> so he had to think quick. How do I flush the toilet? There's no button. How do I do this? How the f- does this work? Right? You reach in. No. Four times later, he figured it out. Got he the, figured, he, John Doe figured it out. There's a button. He, there is no button. You have to hold your hand over the sensor. And uh-huh. I mean, John Doe figured that out and told me what happened. Okay. Um, but still, it would not move. It was on the back. So he did the wrap your hand in toilet paper. 
So you can make the mitt and you give it about, a little. You have about 1.5 seconds to accomplish anything before you're. Give it a little. Nudge. Make it flush and, you know, and it went. Bloop. <laughs> Um, because if you left it there, your boss would see it or the other person there or the security guard would see it <laughs> and the boss knew and the other person knew you went to the bathroom and who knows how long later it would be. And you could blame security guard. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not okay. So, um, always check, just always check, just <laughs> make it a good thing. That's all I'm saying. That's so that's a uh, that's a true story from John Doe. Oh, oh, we're uh, what is wrong with me? You've got on the subject of poop, and I don't know. How. Oh, oh, this yeah, is how we teach kids responsibility. Yeah. Yes. So okay. that's a first step. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got a story. It goes from my coaching days. Okay. Does it talk about responsibility? Maybe. Sometimes Person, you personal some, responsibility. Sometimes you got to pick it up and move it yourself. Um. So there was an AV cart in the locker room one day. Like and by AV, I mean audio visual. Like we used to put like the cart with a big old TV on it. Used to have the projector on it. Oh, right? it's like like the little like you draw on it and it projects it under the. Yeah, it used to have projector. a projector, but it's just the metal cart now. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. So I don't know why it was in the, the locker room at this point in time, but it made its way into the boys' locker room, and um, so it was before practice, and I'm like, all right, everybody out, like get dressed, let's get out to the field. And I go back into the bathroom because we were missing like three other guys, and sure enough. I see the cart in one of the stalls. What the hell? <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? Well, this I could see it from under the stall, but it's an old enough bathroom that it didn't have actual doors. Oh, the okay, yep. So I'm like, do I want to go around the corner and see what is going on? There's no feet, but I can hear laughing. I know where we're going. Keep telling the story. <laughs> Keep telling... Cause I'm a boy. I understand. So I come around the corner. There's an individual squatting on this cart, but over the top of the hovering, his rear end is hovering over the toilet. Seeing how high it's the mile high deuce. Yes. <laughs> it's trying it to is. make it to the free fall like a skydiver. Dude. I Okay. So, okay. okay. <laughs> now I have questions. And I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> He stops, like, looks up and goes, am I in trouble? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just. The cart, did it have wheels? Yeah. Did it have the locks in the wheels? It, I don't know. He was like, kind of holding on to the top of the, like, stall your doors. your butt has to come back. Your feet have to be on the cart and your yeah. butt farther. So he was, like, perched kind of precariously, and he was hanging on to the top of the stall doors. Like That's the, awesome. It's like, what are you doing? A, the, <laughs> Am I in trouble? And yeah, he did get in trouble for that because, like, apparently he had Snapchatted it. <laughs> I wouldn't get him in trouble. I didn't tell him. I didn't have to because he had Snapchatted it. That's epic. He put it on Snapchat, and I'm like, kids are freaking gross, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> would you call that one the torpedo? Because of the velocity, it was more of a bombing. It was more of a bombing run. Okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. It's like a more of a B fifty two high, high elevation. Do girls do these things, or is it just a boy thing? <laughs> Not, there is no way in heck girls do this crap. Boys are freaking weird, dude. I've seen a girl pee from a distance and put out a fire. Oh, I'll pass on the why or how. Just because. This, <laughs> So if we're putting together a podcast episode. I think we're reaching on this one. A bit, I'm just but, saying I'm just yeah. throwing things out. That's the truth. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I hope he learned responsibility from a Snapchat fail. He got nope. suspended for a couple of days. Well, that's awful, man. Don't. Oh, that's awful. Okay. So here's here's a big thing. Um, been thinking about this a lot, and it's been kind of on my mind for the past I don't know, like months and months. Sure. And it's that parents that aren't teaching responsibility are setting their kids up to fail yep. because these kids don't learn that, Hey, I have to earn things. It goes along with like the do hard things, like make your kids do hard things. Yeah. But, and allow them to fail, which yeah. we always talk about failure has to happen. So I fail fast. I mean, let them get them a toy they like or whatever, right? Make them earn it by doing some menial task. 
And if they don't maintain that task, then take it away and give it away. So they realize there's consequences to my actions because they have to know that, hey, if I get in a work situation, there's going to be a consequence if I don't complete my task. You know, there's more to it than that, I think, too. And this is just a simplified version. No, I know. I, I, like, I look at it this way, too. Like, take the theory of, like, where do I normally go for drawing my knowledge or application? The Bible. Yep. Look at the story of the prodigal son. Keep going. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the youngest son, there's two sons, right? The youngest mm-hmm. one goes to dad and says, I want my half of the inheritance. And, and, the, and he the, blows it all. Yeah, and the dad gives it to him, blows it all. The guy's broke. Famine breaks out. He's wanting to eat pig food. So he, he's had an opportunity for failure now, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that we get to the story. We know how the story ends of like, you know, dad sees him from a distance off and goes running. Well, he comes back. Yeah. 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 But the kid has to like have the humility to realize he's jacked up and he's really, really, really screwed up to come back home. His father had to allow him to fail completely. And sometimes they have to fail. Dad could have said no. He could have been like, no, you're not going to have your inheritance. You can have it when I die. Yep. Have a nice day. But it's more that, I mean, kids that are getting everything. So it's amazing how things change when you purchase your own car for the first time. Well, yeah. And right. We, we talk like, about like, don't, don't babysit your kid and like give them everything they want. Mm-hmm. This, I mean, in that story, the dad gave him what he wanted, but he didn't keep the consequences from him. Yep. He allowed it to happen. Yeah. That's and then the, the, that. Well, the, the kid yeah. tried to hide it too. I mean, he yeah. actually had the kid went into servitude to another, they call him masters. And it's not really a master, but that's just was a title at the time. Yeah. He in dead, indentured <laughs> servant. Yeah. Yep. So in servitude, so we had a place to stay because that was the only way to do it. And that at the time was like joining a community and just working for that piece. He fed pigs, which as a Jewish person is like the lowest thing you can do. Yeah. And then he started eating the pig food because there was a famine, but he had to fail. So, I mean, we, we really need to make sure that we're holding our kids accountable for failure and keeping that line. Nobody wants to punish their kid. You don't Mm -hmm. want to punish your kid, right? Ever. No, you never want to. Punishing your kid sucks, but it's also necessary it, it's required because you they have to know that if i do this thing there will be a consequence that i have to pay no matter what mm-hmm. so they have to know where the line is do i step over tonight i'm doing mili- sorry my hands are military hands Apologize. consequences are always paid for if you put them off they're always paid for with interest oh, absolutely and if we don't teach them this kids need to learn humility yeah. right um i know we want to talk to our kids and have them just tell me everything it's okay and we treat them like an equal at least I don't, but parents do. And then you get this kid that'll back talk you and call you out and do whatever. And then you're like, well, I want to be the cool parent. So it's okay. I'm going to make it. It's, it's all right. Express yourself. And it's like, no, learn your place. Figure out you're, you're on the bottom of the food chain right now. I'm sorry. You're my kid, but you're down here. Yeah. You better, you better be available um, and earn that, you know? So teach them humility, teach them consequences, teach them responsibility. Yeah. Allow them to fail. Yeah. And make them fail. Honestly, if, if you think they're going to fail anyway, let them put them in. It. And I was like that. Like I had a coach that would put us in positions that he knew it was like not reasonable for us to have success. That's awesome. And there was actually, I, I read a great story of, uh, there was a baseball coach that I followed for a long time as a kid and got, I knew him, you know, by our family had season tickets, but he was a coach at Lewis Clark State College. His name was Ed Chef. And he used to always put, you could, there's no way you could do this nowadays, but he did it until like 2010. He would literally make his baseball players box each other. At the start of every season, every kid on the team had to fight. Somebody was on the that team. gloves? Yeah, they had boxing gloves and headgear. That's cool. But he would do make him do three one minute rounds because he goes, everybody can say they have confidence and they can do something and they can talk big. Mm-hmm. But it's one thing doing it when you're getting punched in the face. That's and yeah, you that's find true. out a lot about people like if you're gonna fail like. How quick can you get over getting hit in the face? How, how quick can you face adversity and get through it? Do you turn and run when like something gets hard or do you like face it head on and you start swinging haymakers? And so like I was reading some of the players like talked about those, they called them smokers, you know, mm-hmm. like in, the, in it was in a shop downtown, like some, <laughs> some guy that like knew the coach had the shop with a ring inside of it and they'd all go beat the snot out of each other. Well, it's going to show you dedication too. Are you yeah. willing to go through this? Yeah. And they played Eye of the Tiger on repeat for like an hour and a half. Oh, that would be so annoying. <laughs> that would be so annoying. 
<laughs> so I think that kind of drove up the aggravation too, though. Yeah. <laughs> like first, first couple guys out, you're, dun, 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 dun. you're like, all right, yeah, this is sweet. Like I'm in Rocky. And after a while you might be like, Dude, this is awful. <laughs> like get it done. Get it, get it over with. We don't care anymore. Yeah. And so totally awesome. But like, but no, but like that lesson of like putting the kids that you're responsible for in the position, like they have to face something hard. How do you respond? And you can learn a lot about your kid. I'm not saying go make your kid go get in a fist fight with the neighbor. Yeah, kid. Don't do that. No, <laughs> but like put them in a position to where they have to, like, if you're trying to teach them a sport or you're trying to teach them, you know, a skill or even music, like, I mean, you could give them a scale and be like, play that. And it's like a mixolydian scale and like all sorts of mm -hmm. different notes and dissonant tones. And it sounds super weird. And you're like, all right, now play it in eighth notes, you know, and see a kid freeze. Like that's my music nerding out real quick. Yeah, but, it is. it's okay. <laughs> but no, like you can do it in different areas. Like give the kid an opportunity. You may, he may see success even in the failure. Yeah, Absolutely. So it's like, yeah, I couldn't accomplish it, but I got this far and that was further than I thought I could get. Cool. Well, next time you're going to be able to get even further. Hmm. That's where confidence is built. <laughs> I mean, that's, but, that's the only way to do it. And yeah. you have to, you've got to teach a way to struggle through adversity. Yeah. Because you're not going to win. I, I mean, I, I hate that everybody gets a trophy. It kicks me off. I, yeah, I was just saying that yesterday. Like the kids need that failure. They got to, they got to. They gotta, you know, screw up. So like my kid came home from school and he was mad because like four or five kids in his class got like certificates in an assembly for like citizenship and being like a good person and being nice and all these other <laughs> things. And he didn't get one. And so he thought he wasn't good enough. Here's your trophy for showing nothing. up to school. Like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I was like, what would me giving you a certificate? What if you like, why not try harder and maybe you, you get to be one of those people next time instead of the, you think just you should get one because you were there every day. That's what people think. Showing up isn't good enough in life sometimes. Right. I mean, sometimes if people really struggle, sometimes showing up is a huge victory, right? Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong on that, but just being there or like just being like, so if you're a parent and just being a parent, like just by being there, that's not good enough anymore. No. Like you have to be able to instill lessons and be able to, coach your kids through adversity. Well, dude, what's the point of being a cool mom or cool dad if your child fails once you're gone? And then take away the opportunity for them to learn from those failures. I, I'm going to run down to the principal's office and I'm going to negotiate my child's punishment away. Nope. It's funny. It's really funny because I, I love talking to the principal at my, at my kid's school, right? Um, because first, I mean, they're, they're nice, but they never expect me <laughs> like, yeah. at all. So they'll be like, oh, you're, you're, your kid did this. And I'm like, just throw it away. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I don't give a crap. If he was doing something wrong, take whatever he had, throw it away. And they're like, are you? And I'm like, dude, it's fine. He's got to learn. He just, don't bring dumb crap to school. Toss it. And the, the principal's like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, I'm like, whatever you think is okay, go for it. Because my kid needs to understand that you are the authority. Yeah. If, you're, if you need to achieve that respect, get her done. Make it happen. Yeah. Don't make me come there because I don't want to show up. <laughs> it's like, I always like the ones that the parents that would call and be like, yeah, that's not strict enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, the kid's suspended for a week. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's gonna have to work it off. You guys probably can't make him work at school. Can you No. Okay. Well, I'll make his life hell here at home. Wait, they can't, <laughs> they can't clean lockers. <laughs> I don't know. Like that'd be sweet. Make them clean lockers. Yeah. Just scrub down the fronts. Okay. Almost done. Yeah, dude. Was Lean it? on me style. Clean the PE lockers. Oh, gross. Have them scrub the showers. Scrub, scrub the, the toilets. The toilets. Toilets. Uh, yeah. You know, clean up after complain. wrestling. Parents would complain so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wipe down the mats. <laughs> Wipe down the mats with your shirts. Get on your knees. Get a towel. That'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I feel like I just, I don't know, man. Um, We've gone soft a little bit, I think, as a culture. Not because we're afraid of offending our kids and not getting in fights anymore, which is a horrible thing to say almost, but like, seriously, you learn your place when you get into fight. So win or lose. Right. I love Mike Rowe. Oh, me too. He's my guy. The dirty jobs guy. Of course. Yeah. 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 He's my I guy. Tell people, if, if you're listening, that's who I'm talking about. Um, and he said something actually the other week that was really poignant. he's like, you know, we're missing something from society. And what we're missing is, People that get up in the morning, 
come home dirty with a smile on their face. We're missing those people. I agree. I absolutely agree. It's like, you know, the ones that are willing to go through something difficult but end up finding their enjoyment out of it because it leads to living a more fulfilled life. My move, that was powerful. Well, <laughs> like, I yeah. mean, kids are the same way. Yeah. So when you give them something to struggle at and accomplish, they feel proud, right? When you go and you work with your hands, I mean, just tooling on a vehicle, right? Just wrenching around, like you feel better. That's why wrestlers carry themselves differently. I mean, in high school, I always saw that because like, dude, they're doing something way crazier and harder than anybody else in the school is willing to do. Absolutely. Some people think there's a little screw loose, but like, I mean, then not only the <laughs> physical aspect of it, but then what you have to do, like managing your weight, managing your diet, you have to be cognizant of everything that you do and like everything is calculated. Mm -hmm. And I think that those are great lessons for kids to learn. It's like, you know, everything that I do, like if I slip up diet wise, it's going to have a consequence. If yeah. I slip up exercise wise or my time on the mat wise, it's going to have a consequence. Like we, we get so like caught up that's like, you know, you look at basketball, it's like, ah, uh, you know, you take the Allen Iverson approach, practice. What do we need to do practice? It's just <laughs> practice. Like, you know, there's a consequence for not practicing. Yeah. He was a great talent. Yeah. But like take that same mindset into something else. What if your doctor had that mindset? Oh, school. What do we need to do? That? Like, yeah. I'm brain surgeon. Yeah, why, just, why do I need to practice surgery? Why do I need to, you know, have fake it? I don't have to do four years of. That would be, oh my gosh, dude, that would be crazy, crazy, crazy. I mean, like there'd be consequences for that. Like, if yeah. we took a serious role with our kids and in, in taking a look at life, it's like, oh, everything has a reason why you have to go through it and why you have to learn it and when you have to learn it. Mm -hmm. It all has a reason. So take ownership of it now and it makes well, life in the future a lot better. And just, it's, you know, as a parent, like you want to succeed at everything, yeah. right? You, you don't want to fail your kids. And I, I, I always have the conversation with Dylan. I'm like, dude, if you fail once you're out of my house, that's my fault. Mm -hmm. you're, it's my failure, not yours. I didn't put you through what you need to do. I was, I was like, I don't want to be tough on you. I don't want any of this stuff, but I have to be because if, I, if, I, if you fail, that's my failure completely. And I think he gets it. Yeah. But also I think too, like, I mean that, that puts some ownership on him that it's like, well, I've got to be cognizant of my decisions because my dad's going to take ownership for my actions. But also some of those actions are his actions too. Well, I get and, it. But I mean like, yeah. so it, it's like, if you don't take personal, personal responsibility stuff, I didn't teach you how yeah. to develop. It's one thing if they didn't, they did it because they didn't know. Yeah. But if they knew and I taught them that and they still like, I expect some of that stuff. Yeah. That's a given, right? Dude, that's hot. Don't touch it. Yeah. He's going to touch it. I get it. Dude. There's STDs. Don't touch it. I hope that I've instilled the values <laughs> that don't put them in that position. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I, yeah. I hope I cross my fingers, right? That's all I can do. But I, I really just, um, for me, I, I take ownership completely of all of it. Hey, I must have failed you somewhere because you did that stupid thing. I didn't discipline you properly. So you knew consequences were there. Oh, I'm, I, I'm not going to be that parent that's like weeping on the side because, hey, my kid tried to rob you and you shot him. It's not going to happen. That's got to be a painful place as a parent, too, because there is the the thought of, like, where where did I go wrong with my kid? And then you start having regret. And nothing is more painful than regret. Oh, dude, absolutely. The pain of learning sucks, but the pain of regret's even worse. And I think the when you can teach a kid that... Or like you can tell them about personal examples in your life where that's, that's come in. Maybe mm -hmm. it's handling money. Like you've got a regret in how you handle your money and you did budgeting. Like you sucked at it and all you did was just blow your money when your kids were young. And now it's like, hey, you know, we live how we live because I've got some regret in how I handle my money. And I mean, that would, there's a lesson in that. Or yeah. it's like, hey, when I was younger in college, I mean, I racked up like, you know, maybe I had $15,000 in credit card debt. Mm -hmm. You know, that you had to pay for, like, by working three jobs all the way through your 20s to get rid of it. I mean, and so helping kids understand that, like, there are consequences for the decisions that we make. So learn from what I've been through. Take what I say seriously. It's your good. Sorry. It's like, it's like a nice whisper in the background. Let me flip the labels so you guys can't see it. I trust it. Thirsty. Just a nice little sip. A sippity doodah. <laughs> sippity doodah. Sippity doodah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, don't, 
don't put yourself in a position to where you're going to have regrets of things that you didn't teach your kids. Everything that you think is important at some point in your life is important for a reason. Absolutely. I mean, because you learn that lesson. Yeah. If your kids don't learn it from you, they're going to learn it the hard way and they're going to regret that piece. And that, that starts with the, the levels of communication that you're willing to have with your kids. Granted, you know, we talked about boundaries and the healthy parts of communication. Yep. So that's where you have to be cognizant how you approach the certain subjects. But you have to approach them at some point. Like these last three episodes, I think, have all kind of meshed into one another. You know, talking between boundaries or talking about the sex talk because there's boundaries involved in that. Well, and then, this is more boundaries. Yeah, more boundaries because there's consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Like boundaries have consequences. And so you would be failing in showing consequences to your kids by not instilling boundaries and you'd suck at instilling boundaries by not having consequences. There's, there's no easy way to parent, huh. but there is a consistent way to get good outcomes. And the, the worst part would be is if at the 16, 17, 18 and on years, you start trying to do these things. It's already too late. <clears throat> You've lost, you know, some, some of the best things I think is a, dad to help me know that I've been doing a decent job as if someday, you know, Owen comes back to me and he's like, Hey dad, now I know why you told me this. Yep. And you're like, Oh, you, you didn't have to learn the lesson. You listened to the lesson I that I had made. The situation. Yeah. yeah. And you avoided the situation because you'd, you'd, you know, taken heart what we'd said and avoided a consequence. That's, that's a nice feeling sometimes too. Cause you feel like you're on borrowed money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I avoided yeah. the consequence, but like it, it's, it's one thing doing it, not getting away with it, but doing it because you did the right thing. Yeah. I agree. And, that's, and then people recognize that and that's where trust is built. But yeah. That's, Beautiful. That's all I got. That's a good way to end it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So episode seven of season two. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, for the Dad Advocacy Podcast. I'm Ryan. I am Tristan. And we will see you next week. For episode eight. Topic yet to be determined. We have no clue, <laughs> but we'll make it happen. We'll <laughs> see you guys later. Us.